Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Naše programy nabízejí více jazyků. Prosím, navštivte suprememastertv.com lomitko schedule. That's the life that I want. And I always love that kind of life. That's the happiest time of my life. <laughs> that reminds of the poem on a riverbank. <laughs> yeah, I also said on the riverbank. That's where the poem came from, eh? the song came from. Also another one I made for the Buddha birthday, also on the Ganges River. Yeah. These poems are real, eh? real scenery. Yeah. Uh, oh, I really love to have that kind of life. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Chun Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Olexis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Найдобріше привітання, освічені глядачі. Мене звуть Сонечко, я з Києва, з Барвистої України. Наш народ молиться, щоб любов, яку ви даруєте нашим співвітчизникам, повернулася до вас розово. Україна є другою за величиною країною в Європі. Вважається як плато чорного скарбу, яке дарує провідіння через те, що дві третини її сухопутної поверхні покриті родючою багатою мінеральними речовинами землею, пересіченою проточними річками. Як одна з найбагатших харчових кошиків Європи, Україна є одним з найбільших у світі виробників соняшника, а також виробляє широкий асортимент сільськогосподарських культур, вкладаючи кукурудзу, пшеницю, цукровий буряк, ячмінь та сою. Культура України, яка чудово відображає відданість народу православному християнству, має багато дивовижних місць. Наприклад, в Україні є свої сім див, таких як велична Києво-Печерська лавра, також відома як Печерський монастир, вражаючий Софійський собор та острів Хортиця. Плетіння та вишивка – важливі аспекти захоплюючої української культури, що датуються тисячами років. Більше того, музичних фестивалів та заходів, які подобаються на будь-який смак в Україні, є багато і проходять протягом усього літа. Дива цієї прекрасної багатої на спадщину країни не скінчені. Ми 
В захваті поділитися поглядом на нашу заповітну Україну з вами, благословенні глядачі. Ми молимось, щоб небеса наповнили ваші дні божественною славою та гармонією. Протягом трьох десятиліць Верховний Вчитель Шенхай освітлює наш світ своїм божественним вченням. Повністю освічена майстер, вона надає метод медитації Куанінь тим, хто вважає негайно відкрити Божу природу всередині і досягти за одне життя вічного звільнення від циклу трансміграції. Метод Куанджинь практикували усі освічені майстри, такі як почесний Всесвіту, заслужений Будда Шак'ямуні, богоподібний Син Божий Хисус Христос, велетенський майстер, філософ Конфуцій, Господь Кришна, почесний майстер і філософ Лао Цзи, прославлений лорд Махавіра, улюблений пророк Мухаммед Мир'йому, перший сихівський Гуру Шрі Гуру Нанак, Дев Джі та багато інших. Вона підкреслює, що якщо ми завжди пам'ятаємо Бога, надаємо самовіддане служіння іншим і дотримуємося законів Всесвіту, ми досягнемо свого найвищого потенціалу як людей і по-справжньому зрозуміємо наше призначення на землі. Верховний вчитель Ченхай Надзвичайний живий приклад співчуття, регулярно надсилаючи матеріальну та фінансову допомогу, а також любов біженцям, бездомним, жертвам стихийного лиха та іншим, хто потребує допомоги. Верховний вчитель Шинхай глибоко вдячний улюбленому Богу за всю фінансову допомогу, комфорт та підтримку, страждаючим та нужденим, та або будь-яку добру справу протягом багатьох років, як скромне судно для його її співчуття і любов до дорогоцінних дітей. Верховний вчитель Шинхай з повагою дякую всім особам, організаціям, лідерам та урядам за вашу справжню, люблячу та постійну підтримку. Хай небо вас благословить навічно. Ми, члени Міжнародної асоціації Верховного вчителя Ченхай, щиро вдячні вам за вашу виразну доброту, бажаючи вам всього найкращого. Верховний вчитель Ченхай отримує підтримку любові та визнання та любов від різних організацій, засобів масової інформації, урядів та окремих людей, а також багато нагород від них, таких як премія миру Гусі 2006 року, що вважається Нобелівською премією миру Сходу. Всесвітня премія за духовне лідерство у 1994 року, премія Махалир у 2008 році, 22 лютого та 25 жовтня обидва проголошені Днем Верховного майстра Ченхай почесним громадянином США тощо. І протягом багатьох років був відзначений численними іншими нагородами та привітами за її видатні благородні та гуманітарні вчинки.
Просимо вибачення за те, що не змогли показати багато інших нагород та відзнак за брак місця та часу. Верховний вчитель Шенхай з повагою дякую всім особам, організаціям, лідерам та урядам за вашу справжню, люблячу та постійну підтримку. Хай небо вас благословить навічно. Ми, члени Міжнародної асоціації Верховного вчителя Шенхай, щиро вдячні вам за вашу виразну доброту. Бажаючи вам всього найкращого. Верховний майстер Чинхай є справжній голос для наших чудових друзів тварин, які сприяє мирній і люблячій рослинній дієті та умовам з пробудженням людства до святості на все життя, спокійного і славного всевиганського світу, де тварини і люди живуть у блаженній гармонії. Її ініціативи щодо розповод... розповсюдження веганської тенденції різноманітні, і вони включають в себе поширення листівок «Альтернативне життя». Міжнародні веганські ресторани «Лавенхат» веганської компанії з продуктів харчування, веганські вироби з хутра, Supreme Master Television, а також регулярно спілкуються з впливовими лідерами уряду та беруть участь у телевізійній конференції з питань зміни клімату тощо. Ми це усвідомлюємо чи ні? Її зусилля мали величезний вплив на глобальну обізнаність про спосіб життя сприятливого для тварин і про те, як цей доброзичливий спосіб може принести міцний мір серед країн, врятувавши нашу планету від зміни клімату та катастроф. Протягом багатьох років Верховний вчитель Шенхай мандрувала по всьому світу – від Америки до Африки, від Європи до Океанії та проводив сотні дискурсів з громадськістю та її учнями на різні духовні теми. Сьогодні ми благословенні представити одну з цих проникливих лекцій під назвою «Сутра Сурангама. 25 засобів для просвітництва». Третій розділ, частина 5-6, про між майстром та учнями, видана англійською мовою 6 квітня 2019 року в Тайвані. Також відомий як Формоса. Now, the contributing karma, this is a karma that people, yeah, collective karma, and yeah, people around you, they make trouble for you, okay? Of course, you can do that if you don't teach anybody. If you're alone, practicing all for yourself, and maybe indirectly, uh, automatically, by the way, influence your five, six, seven generation. But if you are a master, oh, Any karma is allowed <laughs> to be near you, to cling on you, to rub off on you, hmm? no matter if you're Buddha or not. See, that's why the Buddha, because of his disciple, he has no food for three months. He has to eat uh, horse food. And Jesus has to be nailed on the cross because of karma of disciples. And endless other masters, you name them, they all have them. Okay? But for the disciples, it's no problem, no big deal. You don't have anything. <laughs> you may be affected, you know, it can be affected for just temporarily, but hardly anything too serious. That's a job. You want a job? <laughs> no. Wise, wise. Mm -hmm. You see, this man, he's uh, probably, uh, later on, uh, the world call him precept number one, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like Ananda is memory number one, And uh, Wen Su, how do you say it? Manjushri is uh, 
Wisdom number one, for example, like that. And Maura Lagayana is a magical number one, etc. Yeah? This one, precept withholding number one. That's why he became like a precept transmitter in this group. Uh, whoever knew a karma, he probably transmit the precepts. So he's a law holder in this assembly. Yeah. So that's what he think, yeah? Precepts, yeah, and controlling your mind, your body. Don't let it ruin you. Don't let it rule over you is a method, right? Now, Malgayayana arose from his seat, bowed at the feet of the Buddha, and said to the Buddha, Once when I was out on the road begging for food, I met the three Kashyapa brothers, three of them. One name is Yuruviva, another one named Gaya, the other one named Nadi who proclaim for me the thirst come one's profound principle of causes and conditions. I immediately brought forth resolve and obtained the great understanding. Just to hear the cause and effect, uh, he determined to obtain a great understanding, meaning he resolved he must get enlightenment. Yeah, he resolved at that time. Because sometime maybe he became a monk under the Buddha, but he has not completely determined in his mind to get enlightenment. You know, it's just too comfortable <laughs> every day sit at the Buddha's feet, listening to him talking and explaining things, and the Buddha pamper, you know, spoiling all his monks like his own children. Yeah, it's too comfortable. You know, you know something and you feel something and you're determined to get it. It's another thing. So he know, okay, everybody should get enlightenment, just like all of you do. Yes, Master, we want enlightenment, but I don't know how much you want. So only that day when he went out baking, and suddenly he listened to these three brothers, same in the house, same uh, Buddha's monk, talking about cause and effect. Kamas, yeah. And suddenly at that time, maybe he feels scared. Suddenly it hit him that if he doesn't practice well, if he doesn't get complete enlightenment, maybe like that. Every day he took things for granted. Yeah, I have a Buddha. Buddha will save me. Just don't even think like that. Just too comfortable. Just sit there. Do it not much. You know, maybe you don't meditate very well the way you do. <laughs> you meditate better, right? <laughs> huh? How did he learn so fast after he went outside and started? It just happened, okay? Just like sometimes, suddenly, you listen to me for years, you know, on the computer, yeah, or internet. Uh, Master, uh, yeah, the Buddha, enlightenment nature. <laughs> we all have to be disciplined, must get enlightenment. <laughs> you listen, and then, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but you don't get it. And suddenly, one day, you hear one of my sentence, and then, ah! Oh, it hit you. It brings you something that you never know before. Or maybe one of your brother and sister, they just talk together about something, and at that moment, somehow, it drives home something, okay? It just happened, yeah. We need a lot of cause and conditions to arrive at where we want to arrive, hmm? okay? So it's just like uh, many, uh, some monks before, he listened to this, and then he listened to that, or suddenly he saw this, and then he awakened. Not because of the bathtub, <laughs> not because of the bathhouse, not because of the water. It's just the condition ripened. Yeah, and then it happened. Just like your mother keep giving you milk, and then suddenly one day, that's it, you don't need more milk. And I have practicing to ride bicycle when I was young. I keep falling, hurting my knees. And one day I just can. I thought I could not, you know, keep falling and the bicycle run away from you, you know, they control you, not you control the bicycle. It doesn't go straight, it goes to anywhere. <laughs> you know that when you first try the bicycle. So one day I just can, just like that. You see? Yeah. Time, you know? Yeah. Just time, just the right time, yes. And probably these three brothers talk to each other about the bad consequences of bad action, yeah? Like you could go to hell forever or suffering forever. Just like uh, one of the sutra, Maugalayana, 
one day he also had to take one of his disciples to go to see hell, see all kind of suffering, to wake him up. See that? Hmm. Now these three brothers were talking probably about something very terrible that happened in hell. Maybe because they themselves saw it. That's why it makes more impressive influence on uh, Maugaliyana. Understand? It's, the Buddha say, okay, if you don't practice, you eat meat, you drink wine, you go to hell. Everybody knows that already, yeah? It didn't hit him until that day. Personal experience from these three brothers tell me, oh, you know, my God, yesterday I went to hell. Not went to hell maybe, but hell was open for me to see the scene that people suffer in there, all the beings suffer in it. It's incredible, incredible. It's unbearable. And then it hit him that it's true, it really has hell. And people, beings truly suffering in there. A turning point in his life, yeah, hit him. So he became determined to pursue Buddhahood, at least enlightenment. Otherwise, he don't want to go to hell like that. Yeah. The thirst come one accepted me, and the kasaya was on my body, and my hair fell out by itself. Ah, after that, he came to the Buddha to want to become a monk then. Maybe he was just a lay person before, and just come and go, you know, don't care. What for become a monk? You know, a monk eat one meal a day, how can I bear it? <laughs> yeah, I stay at home, I still have this and that, I eat good food and still can get enlightenment. You see, the Buddha did not say that all of us have to be monks in order to have enlightenment and to reach a Buddha, so why bother, you know? <laughs> Only then it hit him and he ran to the Buddha, became monk. And the kasaya means the, the big rope, the, the most outer rope of the monk. It's like a blanket. Before, you just wrap on your shoulder. Nowadays, they make a button or something here so that it don't fall off. It's just a blanket that mostly Hindu monks still use in it. You know, they have a blanket, they carry it on their shoulder, so it's convenient, you know? And then monks, they have it. They carry it everywhere. They can sweat on the floor to sleep, they can cover themselves, or they can cover when they take a bath in the Ganges, or they don't be too indecently exposed, or change their clothes, something like that. Finally, until this day, in some country it becomes like a must-have, but it doesn't have that uh, practical function anymore. Because in India at that time you have only one inner garment, maybe another cloth or inner garment, and then outside you have this, and you cover yourself from the shoulder on down all the way to your feet yeah? when you walk. It's for decent. And also when it's too hard, you cover shorter, you know, for men it's easy. The Hindu monk, they have that, okay? They have only a, maybe a short or a long cloth underneath, and they have a kasha. Some have more, maybe a T-shirt on top, a saffron color or pink color, yeah. Or maybe not, just that this wrap around and they use it for many things, yeah, to even filter their water. They use a corner of it, put water into their gurk or something, or their bowl to filter. Hmm? In the old time they do that because they don't have other means. Especially if you are a wandering monk, how can you carry all kind of filter bottle, filter machine with you, no? Or here you have all filter water clean, yeah? Yeah, very good. So that's called a kashya, yeah? And nowadays they make it more official and uh, in the old time the kashya will wear out sometimes and the monks of course will mend it with their uh, little pad of cloth. And the more patches, you know, meaning the older, more senior in the monkhood, yeah? And nowadays they all sew it all up for you already. <laughs> many, many pieces on your kashya, just symbolic, you know, mean that you mature in monkhood, that you are be chill and be chuni. Yeah. But in the old time, there was a very practical piece of clothing for the monks and for the nuns. Yeah. The nuns, of course, has to wear more. The monk is easy. Even just that is enough. <laughs> and they wash it and they wear it immediately. Mostly they will have only that. 
I don't have double to change. I had almost like that when I was in Rishikesh, except it's a white. I had two pair. Because if a woman, you get wet, it clings to your body. It's not good. So if it's wet, I change. So I have two pair, but very thin, so that I can carry around, okay? And some undergarment, of course, no? All right. So I had only two. Mm. I wash and I wear immediately. Just put on the rock and, and you wrap around with something, and then you wait, you meditate, and then your clothes dry, and then, and then you go home. Oh, I feel very nostalgic. As long as I'm along the Ganges River, I do this thing. Yeah. I can't remember so many places I went. Yeah. That kind of life is my life. That really is my life. I was so happy. Uh, I did not even think that I'm happy or not happy. <laughs> you just feel, you know, empty of everything. You just fine. You just live your life. That's the life that I want. And I always love that kind of life. That's the happiest time of my life. <laughs> that reminds of the poem on a riverbank. <laughs> yeah, I also said on the riverbank. And that's where the poem came from, eh? the song came from. Also another one I made for the Buddha birthday, also on the Ganges River. Yeah. These poems are real, eh? real scenery. Yeah. Uh, oh, I really love to have that kind of life. You have no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea how I love that kind of life. The other day I was talking to a sister from India and we were saying if we could organize a retreat in, back in Rishikesh or something. You mean me? Are you? Probably we could have worked. All of you? Yeah. I don't know if they have such a big place for you in Rishikesh. It's kind of mountainous, yeah? And some ashram are very small. There's a lot of temples. That temple, but you not know for all this. Small temples, yes. Yeah. And they let you stay three days only. Every resting place in between or temple, three days you can stay. Because other can come. Otherwise, you keep staying there and you become owner of the temple and no other pilgrim has no place. You see? So the rule, three days. Yes. Maximum. Mm. That's very hospitable already, yeah? But I love this kind of life. I don't remember any time, even during my marriage, good marriage, would I have been so happy as that time in Rishikesh. Rishikesh is a more deep impressed because I stayed there long and alone in little mud hut, you know, and truly lived the life that I wanted to, even though I don't have a lot of money. Every day I can afford to make my own chapati, a few, and then a cucumber or peanut butter. That's it. If I eat a, a, an extra samosa, the next day I have to, <laughs> to skip. Lunch, yeah. It's, it's cheap, but I didn't have a lot of money at that time. It had to last, you know, I didn't know how long I stay. Now I think about it. That's the happiest time ever, you know, of my life. Happiest time. And if I could do it again now, I would be ever so happy again. I imagine that. That is for sure. I know what I want. But we don't always have what we want in life, you know. Life take us different path. We just accept it. That brings me to another topic. The brother asked me, oh, just one more ten, and this one is bigger for you, Master, more comfortable, bigger, large. I said, no, I have one already, and I'm happy in it. Why have another? He said, well, just one more in case. I said, no, one more is too many already, because now I already have a lot of things. When I first came to the cave, I'm happy, happy. I have only a few pair of clothes hanging on the string at the window, you know. I don't even have where to hang. I tie the knot between one door and one window to make it like a triangle, empty spot, so I can hang a few pair of clothes. Yeah, and I intended to live like that. And because I forgot that I need to go out and appear in the public and then, you know, conference this and that, and then so they bring clothes in and then because a cave was leaking, uh, originally, I put clothes somewhere else, so I don't want to put it in my cave. I want my cave just empty like that, as is. I don't even want one more chair inside. Just sit on that step so that I can use it also to climb high if I need. But then they brought in a big television. Fine, okay, it's good for me to check out sometime SMTV. And then later, 
uh, because of my dogs. I have to move my dogs to where my, I put the clothes before. I used to live in the VIP house and one room and put all the clothes in there. That was temporarily during the first retreat. I don't want to stay there. I didn't want to. Any houses, <laughs> don't want to. And have garden and lock gates and everything. Yeah. So then I moved to the other empty house. But then the dogs came and they want to see me. And I don't want to go to the VIP house to see the dogs. The dogs stay in the VIP house. I stay in the cave. So I have to move the dogs there so that I can see them often to see if they're okay or not okay, if they're well taken care of or not. You know, you can see that if you see them often, yeah. And every day I go there and make it into my office, yeah. But that only when I see the dogs. And when I don't see the dogs, then I bring uh, work back to the cave and work there. Also there is electricity, light, yeah, they put it in before I don't have if I don't have to work, I don't need electricity either. Uh, when I first came, I did not even have this heater fan. Nothing. And okay for winter too. If you zip the tent down, then you don't feel that cold. Just a little bit more, more clothes or more blanket. Yeah. They brought me three, three very thin fleece kind of blanket. Sleeping bag actually type, but I zip it all out and make it. I pin them together, three <laughs> into one blanket. I didn't want to bother take another blanket in anything. I use them all like that, and it was okay. It's a little chilly, but it wasn't all bad. When you're tired, you come home and just drop that. <laughs> Meditate and then drop that. You don't feel too much discomfort. And then slowly, because of work, and then I have to move all the clothes back to the cave. And now I have even these uh, plastic... Uh, Closet, yeah, but plastic, thank God, you know. But that's it, that's what I have now, yeah, nothing more. Because of the clothes, you know, to protect these uh, delicate clothes like vegan fur and stuff like that. So he wants to squeeze that ten also inside there. I said, no, 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 please, don't make me sacrifice more than I already do. I said, the, the clothes and the closet now that we brought newly in is already <laughs> my limit of sacrifice for all this, okay, for my cave. No more, no more, please take <laughs> He did not understand, so I had to tell him that. These clothes and closet already a sacrifice for me. So if you put another ten here now, it's a bigger sacrifice. Don't force it. I don't want it. If I can, I would throw everything out in just a few pair of clothes. That's all, then I'm happy. But I cannot, so I have to accept it. So just don't make any more. He didn't mean anything bad. He, he worried about me. He was crying even. Master, why stay in such a small space like that? I say, small? I am small. That's enough. You know, the coffin is even smaller. The coffin, you know, when, when we die, even smaller and we fit all in. <laughs> why worry about now? You know, the, the tent is okay. Just fine, yeah. Шановні глядачі, дякую вам за приєднання до нас у сьогоднішній програмі під назвою «Сутра Сурангама» – 25 засобів для просвітництва. Третій розділ, частина 5-6 у «Між майстром та мучнями». Далі слідує «Дорога до великого шляху», дискусія про вчення «Каодай» з доктором Буйдак Хун та доктором Буйдан Кам Хун Частина перша з другого. У словах мудрості одразу після заслуговуючих уваги новин. Будьте в курсі на Supreme Master Television для більш позитивних програм. Нехай небесні царства дарують вам духовну пишність. Respected viewers, 
Thank you for joining us on today's program entitled The Surangama Sutra, 25 Means to Enlightenment, Session 3, Part 5 of 6, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Walking the Great Way, a discussion on Kaudai teachings with Dr. Bui Dak Hun and Dr. Bui Dan Kam Hong, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May the heavenly realms endow you with spiritual splendor. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash bnd.